Journalists have been experimenting with capturing photos of battle since the development of the first photo camera in the early 1800s. This concept was realized during the Crimean War of the 1850s. It was one of the first times photography was used in a major military conflict. War photography has played an important role on the battlefield since then. It can rapidly tell a story of suffering, reaching a large audience in ways that language cannot always. Exposing the public to images of battle can bring to life the hardships that individuals in war-torn areas face. This strong imagery, however, can cause us to forget who is behind the camera. War photographers make great sacrifices to raise awareness of what is going on during a conflict. Some people will even die. Five of these photographers stand out for their daring in the photographs they captured, which are still used to educate history. Robert Kappa Kappa, born Andrew Ern Friedman, was a respected and experienced military photographer who rose to prominence in 1936 for his work in the Spanish civil military. It was there that he took one of his most famous photographs, Death of a Loyalist Soldier. Kappa fled Europe for the United States with the outbreak of World War II in 1938. Here, he began freelance work for a few periodicals, including Life magazine. Kappa traveled to Europe and Northern Africa with the U.S. Army on assignment for life in 1941. Some of his best work from this period came from Omaha Beach, when he documented the start of the Normandy assault. Kappa returned to the United States after the war and co-founded Magnum Photos. Until 1954, when he agreed to record the first Indochino War for life, he spent the majority of his time assisting young photographers. Kappa wandered away from the group of soldiers he was traveling with in Vietnam's Thi Ban province. He was killed shortly after stepping on a landmine. His career reflected his famous quote, If your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. Gerda Taro Taro had a profitable career despite not having a long career thanks to her close relations to Robert Kappa. She was a Jewish woman residing in Leipzig, Germany during the advent of the Nazis, and as a result, she fled to France. Taro became interested in photography after meeting German photographer Tim Geidel at work. When she met Robert Kappa a year later in 1934, her interest was piqued. They fell in love and later moved in together. Taro would work as a darkroom assistant for a buddy when Kappa was out on shoots. She began learning the fundamentals of photography here. She would get a job with her newfound expertise. Taro and Kappa continued to hone their photographic abilities. By 1936, the couple was reporting on the Spanish Civil War for VU magazine. Tara was confident enough in her work by July 1937 to embark on her own trips. On one of these solo visits, she visited the front in Brunet, Spain on July 25. German planes began bombing the city shortly after they arrived. Tara discovered a press car to climb onto while looking for shelter. A tank tank struck with the automobile during the escape, knocking Tara off and crushing her. She was sent to a British military hospital nearby. She died the next day as a result of her injuries. Tara was the first female combat photographer to be killed as a result of her work. Tim Hetherington Hetherington began his education in literature and graduated from Oxford in 1992. Soon after, he acquired a strong interest in visual media and earned a second degree in photojournalism from Cardiff University in 1997. Following a brief spell with the big issue, Hetherington preferred to work independently on initiatives he believed were more important for the world to know about. He wanted to be the one relaying the stories of human suffering, which led him to spend eight years in Africa, where he published the majority of his works. His early years were spent with fellow war photographer James Brabazon covering the Second Liberian Civil War. They would collaborate on the documentary Liberia, an uncivil war. He then took the time to chronicle current rehabilitation efforts in Africa, the majority of which were centered on sports assisting child soldiers in their return to normal life. Hetherington would travel to the Major Delta momentarily to cover natural resource disputes before heading to Afghanistan. Here, he would accompany U.S. Army personnel and create documentaries about their daily life as well as the lives of local citizens. He traveled to Libya in 2011 to document the anti-Gaddafi rebellion and civil conflict. On April 20, Hetherington and colleague war photojournalist Chris Hondros were murdered in a mortar strike by Libyan forces in Misrata. Chris Hondros Hondros earned a bachelor's degree in literature before working as a combat photographer for Getty Images. He spent his entire career there, beginning with reporting conflicts around Africa. Hondros rose to prominence during the Second Civil War in Liberia. During the early 2000s, his image of Joseph Duo, a young guy fighting since the age of 14, would be widely distributed across media channels. 
Hondros would subsequently return to Liberia to see Du again and even pay for him to return to school as he detailed in an online article. Following his stint in Africa, Hondros would spend a significant amount of time in the Middle East with the U.S. military, filming patrols. In one incident in Talafar, Iraq, Hondros was caught in the dark with soldiers at a military checkpoint. The soldiers were alerted to a vehicle in the distance, and after unsuccessfully attempting to stop it, they fired into it. There were six children inside, one of whom had been grazed in the abdomen, and two deceased parents. It was here that Hondros obtained another of his legendary photographs, one that appears to be from a Hollywood film. A youngster crouched on the ground, bloodied and wailing, with a soldier standing nearby. Hondros traveled to Libya in 2011 to film the Civil War, and he was murdered by a mortar attack in Misrata on April 20, along with Tim Hetherington. Larry Burroughs Burroughs, who was born in London in 1926, has always been interested in the arts. He began his career covering conflicts in Northern Africa, but did not achieve fame until 1962, when he embarked on a nine-year trip recording the Vietnam War. While other combat photographers used black and white film at the time, Burroughs frequently used color film, which gave his photographs a unique viewpoint. This, combined with his goal to see the battle through the eyes of a soldier, gave his photos an intimacy rarely seen at the time. He would reside in troops camps, perform combat missions in helicopters, and stay on the front lines when violence erupted. While the majority of Burroughs' images depict the aftermath of such warfare, such as reaching out, he still had time to shoot photos during battle, such as his photo essay, One Ride with Yankee Papa 13. This intensity and closeness would pervade Burroughs' work throughout his career, until his death. Burroughs and four other war photographers were shot down while flying over Laos in a helicopter on February 10, 1971. The, cra the crash killed everyone. Following Burroughs' death, Life Managing Editor Ralph Graves stated, I do not think it is demeaning to any other photographer in the world for me to say that Larry Burroughs was the single bravest and most dedicated war photographer I know of.